And now, another exciting episode of As the River Churns. Happy Monday afternoon, everybody. Hey. Another beautiful afternoon. For I know, it's gorgeous. It's a little windy, but it's it's beautiful. It out. is a little windy. Yeah. We, we did venture outside at uh, lunchtime, and it was... I thought it was Monday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep, it is. Hi, y'all. <laughs> and we have us a special guest today, our, our favorite chaplain here at River Landing, yeah. at least on the independent living side, yeah. uh, right. Ken, Ken Massey. So, He's uh, back. Yes. <laughs> Now, Ken, you had talked about maybe that instead of you coming today, Freddie Bob, we should have had Freddie Bob come today. Yeah, Freddie Bob's scheduled to get here pretty soon. I yeah. probably could have had him here a little early. You probably could have. Yep. You know, I think we also decided, though, that we don't want Freddie Bob to come out too early because we want people to buy tickets, not to sell them back. To yeah, us, right? that's that's a point. Yeah. And he get, he tires easily. Oh, does he? Yeah. You said he's that's like right. 90. He's 97. 97. Yeah. Yeah. He's 97. Okay. okay. So, so we got to save him up for next the next week? It's next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday wow. is our reverse raffle. Wow. Yeah. Whew, time flies. Yeah. Yep. When we get to that, we need to talk about the, the nacho box thing that we've got. Today, yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. He also our, has a little narcolepsy. Oh, does he? Yeah. Yeah. But I think it'll be okay. Okay. He just going to fall asleep on us? Well, he might. I, I was thinking as long as he doesn't fall asleep in the middle of reading a number, you don't want to get just two <laughs> of the three digits. I think it'll be That fine. would be bad. Right. Like yeah. he might say fifth and you just don't know. Yeah, what right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I may I may, you know, wire his clothes with a little something that I can give him a jolt. <laughs> Wake him up. Well, if not, I know somebody else on the stage that could probably give him a jolt too. Uh, yes. Probably <laughs> so. Probably so. <laughs> All right, so um, we want to say thank you for the photo of the day. Yes. That came from John Croom, right? John Croom, yes. Thank you, John. That was pretty cool. I like mm -hmm. that one. That was. That was. Good. That was. And oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we got to. We got to do this. Flipper. Flipper. Yep. They call her Flipper. There we go. Lisa, it's not on the. Agenda. It's not on the agenda anymore. Why is that, Lisa? I don't know. I'm living on the edge. We're just it was a spontaneous just, thing. It's a spontaneous yeah. thing. If we remember, we, we turn it over That's to right. Scott and we don't. All That's right. right. You know, your choices are spontaneity or rhythm. So. <laughs> and we don't want and rhythm. We don't want to go there again. So. All right. Okay. I think we're at the trivia question. I think we need to move on, yes. <laughs> okay. The winner today, yes. we're announcing the prize first. We are. We're announcing the prize first. Yes, yes because yes. people are getting, like, trigger happy. Yeah, they are. And they're calling the number. Don't have it on speed dial. We know right. that, right? And we might change up the number one day. That's why you just never oh, know. Don't. Yeah, that, would be, that okay. would be catastrophic. So the winner today, these are prize possessions here. Oh. Disinfectant wipes. We know everybody is on search for these, and you can't get them anywhere. We were able to get these. Yeah. The only thing bad about these, though, is they're used. So we put them back <laughs> in there and... They rolled them back up uh, and... We put yeah. a little water in there and they're fine. They really are. They're fine. I, I think they're okay. No, so we'll, we'll have Not, that. That's, those are great. And then we have three bottles of beer. <laughs> <laughs> because only three could fit in the bag with the disinfectant wipes. Oh, okay. So when Brian delivers these today, there really is only three bottles in here. He didn't drink the fourth. So one is for external use and one is for internal use. <laughs> you have to guess which one is which. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Call your medical provider for counsel. <laughs> Make sure you're drinking the right one is what yes, you're saying. Right, okay. Yes. Okay, okay, so we know what the prize is. Now we need to know what the question okay. is, Lisa. And the question is from John Hoyt. We hadn't used one of his questions in a while. so yeah, we, we banned him for a while, didn't we? We did. We yeah. did. He was giving us a lot of them. So now we're back to John. What country did not consider beer alcohol until 2011? What country did not consider beer alcohol as alcohol until right. 2011? Until I think it was Alabama, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for a country, country that did not consider on, beer you know, alcohol it's it's Montana. <laughs> <laughs> until 2011. Okay, so the phone number to call, because lines are open, 336-389-4103. 
4103. Call us with the answer. She ran out of the room yet? She ran out of the room. So All right. I think that was someone on speed dial. But I don't know that they got the answer right. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do a little bit of update on the coronavirus. Why don't we do that? Okay. So this is as of today. And um, I'm comparing this to the results from Friday at this point. So as of today, again, this is through the North Carolina Department of uh, Health and Human Services. Um, we have almost 110,000 completed tests for North Carolina. That's an increase of about 9,500 from when, where we were on Friday. And on, um, as far as confirmed cases, we're at 9,142, which is increase of about 1,100 from Friday. And I just did a little calculation. The, the 9142 is about 8.3 percent of the total tests that are taken. So we mm -hmm. we've been running right around that 8 percent mark right. for the last couple of weeks now, um, pretty pretty consistently. Uh, unfortunately, we've had 306 deaths in the state. That's an increase of 37 over where we were Friday. And um, as a percentage of deaths. Um, we're at 3.3 percent for each of the confirmed cases. 3.3 percent. So, um, you know, our our death rate is still very low, which is good. And that's really good. Our currently ho currently hospitalized, we have 473. That's four less than where we were on Friday. And as a percentage of the confirmed cases, that's 5.2 percent net actually has been dropping because obviously as the cases have been going up and the hospital stays have been staying pretty consistent, that percentage just continues to drop. And we've had two more counties since Friday that have actually now have a case. So 95 out of the 100 counties in North Carolina have a case now at this point. Um, and then by county, um, Mecklenburg is still the highest at this point with 1,492 cases. That's 85 more than what we were on Friday. Wayne County is 635. That's 39 cases more than Friday. Wake, 671. That's 38 more than Friday. Durham is at 539. That's 45 more than Friday. And then locally here, Guilford County is at 301 cases, which is 29 um, cases more than what it was Friday, and for Scythe is 156, uh, 14 more than Friday. So um, you know, we're continuing to see those numbers go up, although not going up in a, what I consider to be any kind of extreme measure, but going up nonetheless. Um, just a couple things I thought that might be of interest to you. Um, so um, this is kind of random here, but um, I think most of you have been watching the news. You probably have seen that there are some states that are getting ready to kind of start uh, a phase back or a reopening. Um, Georgia is one of those, I think, that was today, was supposed to start today, Georgia and Montana. Um, and so that was interesting. I was reading a few articles about that. Um, and Georgia, a lot of the folks that are reopening are very, uh, they're very, being very careful about reopening because they, they're, they're still afraid that they don't want to get their staff sick. Um, and so I don't know how much they're going to be able to reopen, reopen, mm -hmm. but um, at least they've said they're going to start reopening. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the, the local hospitals here, because we have 473 that are hospitalized, you know, our hospitals can hold a lot more than that 473. So uh, as I've been mentioning or we've been mentioning along on the show, our hospitals are not overrun at this point, which is really a mm -hmm. good thing because, you know, we've seen what happens when the hospitals are overrun like up in New York um, and some of these other areas. Um, and we've been really very fortunate to not have that. Um, and then two other things. One was um, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has told us in a email format that um, they will very soon be starting to list the nursing homes and retirement communities that have cases in them so, and how many cases they have. So they're going to be publishing that. And, you know, I think, honestly, that's a good and a bad thing. Um, I'm not so crazy about the fact that they're naming the facilities that have it. Um, but um, the good thing for us is to know where it is and how close it is to us. And we know it's getting closer to us. Um, we know of a retirement community that's 
very near to us that um, has had its first case of COVID-19. It was a staff member um, who mm. um, has tested positive for it. And then the other thing I thought was interesting is um, you all been probably been seeing in the news that um, they have this group that's been doing these protests in Raleigh. It's called a Reopen North Carolina protest. Well, you, I don't know if you all saw this, you may have, but I thought this was kind of interesting that what there was three mothers that actually started this and one of the three mo mothers um, has recently tested positive for COVID-19 mm -hmm. um, and was complaining about having to be quarantined for two weeks and um, not surprised by that, I guess. But um, um, I thought that was kind of interesting as well. But mm. a lot going on out there right now. There is. I had a um, neighbor that thought if he drank a lot of vodka, it would protect him from coronavirus. Yeah. You know, alcohol outside. Alcohol inside was yeah, his view, yeah. Sure. I think there's maybe some people here that have that view too. Yeah, are you injecting disinfectant? No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. But, but, but he drank vodka every day, and, but he, he did get the virus and he died and they, they cremated him. He burned for three days. <laughs> <clears throat> True story. Okay, so this that's, is, our, that's not this is our last week of having cancer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a true story. I thought you were going to redeem yourself yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was our goal. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Um, and just keeping up with the, the coronavirus update, um, we are getting some reports this weekend that a few residents left our campus to go up to the ambulance base at the front of the property to meet family members. And don't have the details about that, but that cannot happen, folks. Um, you know, visitors are not allowed on our campus, and even though that's not exactly our campus there, if you're meeting family members, we're going to ask you to quarantine. That is right. just not something that you can do. Um, so uh, we're, we may be getting hold of a few of you here and this afternoon to talk to you about that particular situation because we understand there was a, at least a couple residents right, that went and right. did that. That's just kind of bypassing the whole yeah, and, whole and protocol we and have set up. That's not doing our community any no. good. You're, you're not only no. you're risking yourself, you're risking the rest of the residents and the staff of this community. So right. I would ask you not to do that. Please don't do that. That's right. not right. And then Lisa, we have? We have 27 raffle tickets left out that's of the it. 300. 27. I mean, that's pretty amazing. In what, less than two weeks we've been selling them? Yeah. And sold them all but 27. So now is your last chance. This is last week to get tickets. And I really thought our challenge were, remember, Tom, we threw it out there. If you buy a raffle ticket, you could put your name in for a drawing to be a guest on our show. But yeah. apparently that hasn't really sparked any ticket sales. Well, we probably gave them the wrong phone number for that. We right? probably did. <laughs> We probably did, because I, I, I thought that would be a sellout right yeah, there. But, yeah. but we still have 27 tickets left. I think you I think you thought it would, Elise. I, I kind of felt like yeah, the residents I would, probably didn't I was have highly to do with our show if could help it. So. <laughs> I mean, this is your chance to meet my Uncle Freddie Bob. Now, you don't, you don't want to miss him. Or Aunt Freddie Bob. He's a gas <laughs> in every sense of the word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's great. Only 27, 27 tickets left. left. Yes. And, you know, we need to mention this, but, you know, we are going to have um, a nacho box, right? Right. right. Absolutely. Uh, our dining team is putting together a nacho box for everybody that buys a ticket. Um, and we're going to be delivering those nacho boxes to you a couple hours ahead of the event next Tuesday night. And it'll have the makings to be able to make like to make a, your own. Make so your own have little individual. nacho type um, thing. And right. it's going to be great. Yep. So uh, exciting. so I think it's going to be cool. So if you haven't had a chance to buy a ticket yet, do it fast because they're running out. We only have 27 left at this right, point. Right, right. Okay, Lisa, how about some okay, questions? Okay, we have some week? questions today. What are some things I can safely do off campus without getting quarantined? This is always a big question, Tom. It yes. is a big question. How could I leave campus but not get quarantined? Yeah. So... <clears throat> what you were talking about earlier, visiting with family and friends is a great way to get yourself quarantined. Yeah, it is. Right? That's so right. We, we wouldn't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Um, but what can we do going off campus and be safe? So, so can I get gas for my car? 
Yeah, the answer up to that is yes. I mean, if you're exercising your vehicle, we mentioned this on Friday. We did. Mm -hmm. We did. If you're exercising your vehicle and you are not stopping anywhere other than maybe the gas station to be able to get gas, that's fine. You know, when you start getting out of your vehicle and going into the sheets or you're going mm -hmm. into right. somewhere right. else, that's not fine. Then you're putting yourself at risk then. You're coming in contact with others. You know, stopping to get gas is okay. I would ask you, though, Sometimes they have the little plastic gloves there that you can use to get gas or take a glove with you and use it to get gas. When you're pushing buttons on there, make, if you have a sanitizing wipe, take a sanitizing wipe and after you're done, wash your you know, wipe your hands down really good, whatever, because gas pumps carry germs, they carry bacteria and you could get it from that. Yep. So, because you don't know who's been pumping gas before you. So, you know, we ask you to please make sure that you protect yourself if you have to go out and get gas. But yes, the answer is if you want to leave, be able to just get out and be able to exercise your car um, or just be able to get out and drive around a little bit, that's fine. We don't have a real problem with that. Um, yeah, we just think that's, yeah. a, good, that's yep. a good thing to be able to do. Yep. And that leads into the other one. Um, uh, one of our residents called it a drive and see. So if I just want to drive around and see the scenery, I never get out of my car, that's mm -hmm. a safe thing to do right now if you're leaving campus. Yeah, and we had, uh, just, um, just as a little follow-up, we had a couple of residents took advantage of us mentioning on Friday about being able to go out and see. And we had a little bit of a, a communication issue with one of our security guards who was handing out warnings to those folks, not realizing that we had mentioned that that's the case. And we've corrected that. Yep. It was yep. one staff member that apparently had not gotten the message, right. and so we fixed that. So, uh, Medically approved doctor appointments. That would be another reason you could leave campus and not get quarantined. That's correct. Now, when I say medically approved, that means you've gone through Cindy or Homer to make sure that that doctor appointment is good to go. It's not an elective type thing. That's I think most things now, your doctors are canceling all electives. Mm -hmm. So chances are it's going to be, it's medically necessary. Right. Um, let's see. Taking your car for a safety inspection, as long as you would check ahead of time with the person you're taking it to that they put precautions in place. But we did talk last week. Most dealerships will come out here and pick up your car for you, so you don't even have to go out there and, and be exposed to anybody for that. Um, so just don't forget that part. Most dealerships will come out here, and Homer's Group has been managing that. So um, if you do have that concern, just call us, and we can help you with that part too. So that's some of the things that you could do off campus and yeah. still be safe. It's unfortunately, it's not a lot. It's not a lot. Um, but it is, that is some of the things right. that you can do. Yes. Something, sometimes just driving to see what the scenery is out there is enough just to give us a little boost. Right. Um, as long as you're not leaving the car. Okay, so the next question I got is the opposite of that. What are, the, what are some of the reasons I might get quarantined? Yeah. So obviously being sick, showing signs of a virus, that would be a reason you'd get quarantined. Yeah. Um, Traveling. Traveling. Yeah. Not that there's much traveling out there anymore, but that, that would be a reason. Yeah. Um, leaving campus and getting out of your car. So that could be the grocery store, drug the drug store, store mm -hmm. the ABC store, Even places that you don't have to go That's because right. we will pick up for you. Right. Even like places like I was talking about with the sheets or whatever. Absolutely. Because you're getting gas doesn't give you the right to be able to walk inside. Absolutely. Else, yes. So. Uh, visiting friends and family outside of the community. You're just, we're just trying to limit that exposure, that risk, that possibility of getting that virus in here. That's correct. A recent stay at the hospital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one that if you're admitted to an emergency room or you're in the hospital for any reason, that just it increases your risk of something. So right. we've been very careful with folks that have been out to a hospital. So that's just some of the reasons. Yep. Okay, next. And, if you, and maybe we yeah. just to say, if you have a specific thing that you want to ask about, it's a great time to get a hold of Cindy or, or Homer, and they'll be glad to lead you Absolutely. through any discussion of that. Yes, yes. Um, the next question. I really like your show and think you have addressed some great questions and have clarified things. Could you create a frequently asked question page to put on Care Merge that addresses all the questions you have been reviewing on the show? I miss the show sometimes, and this would be helpful. Hmm. Um, I thought that was a great suggestion. So we can look through some of our past agendas and yeah. things that we've addressed on the show and some frequently asked questions and try to work on putting something like that together. I, th I thought it was a great idea. Yeah. Because um, we, we have 
kind of repeated some of the things. Yeah. So that may might be helpful for folks. So thank you for that question. We know not suggestion. everybody can watch every show every day. No. So it, it's I mean I can't believe that. that they wouldn't find time to watch our show every day. But you know, it's the, it ratings, happens. It, the ratings have been very high so far. So <laughs> maybe we're getting pretty good participation. Maybe, maybe, but <laughs> and once Friday, in a while. I don't know if you could beat Friday's show. I mean Friday was pretty good yeah. with Marisa. Yeah, that was I have to admit, that was a that fun, was a good show. That was a fun show. And by the way, just so you all know, in case because she's had people asking her, um, I asked her, I said, Well what, how did your husband react to the to the, the questions 10? at the end? <laughs> <laughs> she said, My husband asked me two questions. She said First of all, did Tom make me read them, make you read those <laughs> questions, or make me read those the responses? And, of course, she told him that. And, um, and he said, um, did he say anything about handcuffs? <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was the only two, two questions. questions to <laughs> and apparently he got a big kick out of it as he well. He did. He thought it was yep. funny. So uh, good for him. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. So next question. Can you consider a way to offer a steak option as a weekly special? Oh, oh, I have friends in Texas. Yes. I mean, one owns a company called Cattle to Go. I mean, we could probably put a few head out here. We they could graze on the golf course, you know. Oh, grass Oh, I'm feet. sure that'll be <laughs> yeah. sure that'll go well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we might have a which, connection there. So yeah. which hole would you put them on? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> Probably Scooter needs to decide that. <laughs> Maybe number three. Huh? That's the longest one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so we, we have heard a lot about steak. We, we know that that's an option that we're all missing. Um, to be honest, it's very challenging to cook steak because everybody has different ways they like it. Rare, medium rare, well done. I mean, we all have different ways that we like it. Um, but Joseph and his team are looking at a way to see if we can try it as a special one week. Yep. Coming soon. It's not this week but coming soon. Um, so we're trying to work that out. We would probably have it where we cook it to a certain temperature. We would tell you all it's going to come this way. And then if you want to finish it off further, you could do that at home. Mm -hmm. um, but we won't be able to do it with five different ways of doing a steak. So right. we're going to have to come up with a way to be able to offer that to you. Um, and then we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. Yep. Yeah. I think the other thing they're looking at is uh, product availability, too. Absolutely. We know that we have a lot of steak eaters here, and so if right. we do that, that would be probably quite a few steaks that we'll end up doing. Right, right, absolutely. Okay, last question. When will we do testing for COVID-19 here at River Landing? Yeah, I think there seems to be a little bit of confusion about that. Yeah, uh, is it going to be multiple choice? Multiple is it going to be true false? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what exactly. I want to know. Yeah. I did a lot better with multiple choice when I was in school. <laughs> this is why you fail the screening every time you come in. That's the right. <laughs> that's right. It's open-ended. So. Yeah. Right. So um, we are not planning on doing um, just a blanket COVID-19 screening at this point, more testing at this point. First of all, the, the tests aren't out there for us to be able to do that. And we're... we're um, the situation as it is now is you still need to either be showing signs uh, uh, or symptoms of the the disease or the, the virus, um, and you have to have a doctor's note to be able to do that. And so, uh, we're not our plan. We're not planning on doing that at any time here, anytime in, um, in the near future. You know, do we have residents that um, we have um, that we've tested? Yes, we've had a couple of residents we've tested just be, to be on the safe side. But those are onesies and twosies. Those are folks that are showing some sort of sign or symptom that they might um, possibly have contracted the virus, and so we're doing the extra precautions for them. But um, And then we've got a few test kits as well for staff members and residents that we could use if we need to. But, you know, it's not like we've got a 1,000 test kits sitting here wait, waiting and ready for residents and for us to start testing. That's just not the way it works right now at the moment. So we'll just... Um, We'll kind of see how this goes in the future. I mean, sure. at some point, they'll come up with a rapid test, which they have. Um, and, and some folks other than hospitals might be able to have access to those rapid tests. And where it seems reasonable to use the rapid test for some reason here, then we could consider that. But right now, the answer is no. We're not, going, we're not planning on doing any testing here um, other than the anomaly ones, the ones that are showing some sort of signs or symptoms. Okay, that was it for questions. Wow, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Ken, so how was your weekend? 
it was great. It was great. I did a little home improvement project. Yeah. Yeah, replaced some rotted wood around a door and resealed it and painted it and felt good when I was done. Well, that's right. good. Yeah. Did you do the work yourself? Or? I did. I did. Okay. Well, yeah, that's yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, do good. some of that handyman stuff. Sure. And look, still have all ten fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know you're pretty good. Or, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think people, are, you know, are spending a lot of time at home, so they're doing a lot they of are. home improvement mm -hmm. projects. I know I last three weekends, maybe four, I've been doing a lot of stuff around the house as well. And Cleaning, throwing stuff away, you know. Organizing all the closet. Of, yep. Organizing yep. A little bit of everything. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. good stuff. And then I'm sure a lot of people are coming closer to our Lord um, this, this, over the last uh, few weekends here, too. Yes, and apparently they think it's th via the ABC store as the mediator. <laughs> That, is that ABC or ABC <laughs> score? Oh, seed. <laughs> I haven't tried that one. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe so. Well, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with using the ABC store. Right. For, 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 for what purposes you might have it for. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Well, I, I, was, uh, I heard a story about a, um, um, a Sunday school teacher, third grade Sunday school teacher that was going to do a lesson on King Solomon. And that particular story where uh, there were two women who both claimed that they were the mother of a single baby. Yeah, Remember that story? I remember mm -hmm. that. And, uh, and, of course, one was the real mother and one was not the real mother. They were both saying they're the mother. And King Solomon, in his wisdom, says, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the baby in half and give you each a half. And, and the teacher had a visual aid. It was a, a, a picture of King Solomon standing there, and there's the baby, and there's one mother sobbing crying right and, and the other woman with her arms crossed kind of with a scowl on her face and as the teacher's telling the story king solomon's going to cut the baby in half a little boy runs up and points to the woman who looked like the bad one and says i hope she gets the half with the butt <laughs> <laughs> which brings me to our devotional idea today <laughs> which is what do you do when you get the butt half of life hmm. now don't you think that would be a great devotional Okay, let's move on, Lisa. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, birthdays. Birthdays today. Okay. Uh, Maybe next week. Next yeah, week. The, next the week. About half of life. We'll huh? have to work on that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday to no one today. Uh oh, no, no birthday one today, today, and no one tomorrow. Why? Wow. Our next birthdays aren't until Wednesday, so. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Must have been the rhythm method. <laughs> <laughs> We're back to that again. <laughs> Back to that again. Uh, okay. You know, have you noticed only a chaplain can get away with these kinds of <laughs> You're things? You're right. You know, but can he really get away with it? <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I don't know either. Not. No, it all comes back to me. <laughs> uh, okay. We're down to the trivia winner. Uh-oh. Now, on Friday, I forgot the winner. I announced the <laughs> answer. Well, that's okay. I forgot I, the winner. Remember, I tried to close the show off early <laughs> last Friday. <laughs> so let's see if we get it right this time. So what country did not consider beer alcohol until 2011? The answer is... See, I thought it was Germany. Didn't you think it was Germany? Germany. What I, do you think, Ken? I would have thought that, yeah. Germany. It is Russia. Hmm. So Russia. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. Until then, anything containing less than 10% of alcohol was considered food stuff in Russia. <laughs> wow, food stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> who knew? Um, so, of course, the winner will get the disinfectant wipes and, and, and non-alcoholic <laughs> beer. And three <laughs> bottles of beer. So, that's exciting. And if you go winner, to Russia, it'll be non-alcoholic, yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> and the winner is Mary Ann Farnay. Hey! So, congratulations, right. Mary Ann. Um, now, when Brian delivers this, like I said, there's three beers in there. But he delivered some beers last week, I think to Tom Burleson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He only delivered him five of the six beers. What happened to the other beer? He hid the sixth one. Uh-oh. He plays like um, Easter with people. He plays like Easter. Okay, so he <laughs> plays like he's the bunny, and he hides one of the beers somewhere at your house, like outside your house, and you have to go find it. I've got so to tell my pastor about that for an Easter beer hunt. <laughs> Easter beer hunt. <laughs> I oh, can't be wait. For the kids or for the adults? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever. That's the adult hunt. Okay, I like it. So, Miss Farnay, I apologize if he does this to you. Um, he's just playing with you. 
<laughs> and it's just it's a an adult Easter hunt. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. If you only get two in your bag, one is somewhere on your property. You know, okay. It's a, it's an interesting thought. If you get those little sample bottles, <laughs> they probably fit in one of those plastic eggs. eggs. Don't you think no, so? They Maybe might. They do make the eggs. bigger eggs. I bet you could do I that. I bet you could do that. That would be. <laughs> Maybe we should try that. Change, it would change the complexion <laughs> of Easter. Be sure. It sure would. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think it would. You're right about that. Okay. <laughs> I think we're down to the jokes. All right, the jokes. Oh, and remember, <gasps> beer is internal. Wipes are external. Correct. Yes, thank you for the clarification. Yes. Because <laughs> I, I think we've had some trouble with that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right, are you ready, Ken? Yes, these, I'm ready. These are, some, these are some good ones here. Okay. So... These are all kind of like little little saying type things. Okay? okay. And this came from Sarah Hooper, so thank you, Sarah. Um, I used to spin that toilet paper like I was on Wheel of Fortune. Now I turn it like I'm cracking a safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, you got to be careful with that toilet paper. Yeah. This, now, I found this one to be very true. I need to practice social distancing from the refrigerator. Yes. <laughs> Right. It's a, <laughs> six, six feet, feet would help. Feet yeah. away, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. help. <laughs> <laughs> it needs an alarm when you open it. Um, so this is a PSA. Every few days, try to try your jeans on just to make sure they fit. Pajamas will have you believe all is well in the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, yep. Uh, um, I, I know a lot of people are going through this right now. That homeschooling is going well for a lot of people. Uh, in this particular case, two students were suspended for fighting, and one teacher was fired for drinking on the job. <laughs> <laughs> your, your average American home. Yep. <laughs> I don't think anyone expected that when we changed the clocks, we'd go from standard time to the twilight zone. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's where we are. Yeah. I thought this one was kind of cute. This morning, I saw a neighbor talking to her cat. It was obvious she thought her cat understood her. I came into my house, told my dog, and we laughed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? Uh, tell me if this one relates to you at all. Okay. My body has absorbed so much soap and disinfectant lately that when I pee, it cleans the toilet. <laughs> oh, God. That goes back to the internal and external. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. The lines are getting blurred they here. They are. Folks. And then there was a classified ad that just was in the paper recently. It said, single man with toilet paper seeks woman with hand sanitizer for good, clean fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good. I've got one. Oh, Eagle, tell us. Eagles may soar, but weasels never get sucked into jet engines. <laughs> <laughs> with that, <laughs> we're going to say... Good night and <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> we love you all.